there are a number of countries in Europe that are planning or doing uh, cannabis reforms. Can you explain us which countries and what's happening? There? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> well, we have uh, the old guy on the block, that's the Netherlands, which has been there for, uh, for uh, almost 50 years now. And they have started the experiment. This, the, the preliminary phase is now going. That's with two, in two cities. And, uh, well, you know, the back door and the, and the front door problem. So in, in the Netherlands, you can buy your cannabis at the front door without any problem. It's still, it's not allowed, but it's, it's tolerated. And now there's an experiment also with the back doors, because in the past, the coffee shop owners did have to buy their coffee shop on the illegal market. And now the, the Dutch uh, the government had decided already six years ago to start an experiment. And now that finally started in the autumn of this year with two cities. So they now get their tolerated supply of uh, cannabis, which is done by uh, uh, licensed uh, growers. Later this year, in June or July, uh, other eight cities will uh, yeah, follow up. And then the whole, uh, the whole experiment... Um, will go on for the next four years. And then the government at a certain point has to decide, does this work? But of course the idea is to see what the impact is on public health, security and uh, crime, whether or not to really um, regulate it for the f fully for the whole country. But we also had elections and we now have a, a right wing majority in Parliament, and yeah, what, what they will do is unclear, but there is some indication because a district of Amsterdam is also supposed to be in the experiment, and for that they had to change the law, and their uh, that right-wing party uh, yeah blocked it. So that is some kind of indication what yeah that new right-wing majority in Parliament looks like and what it will do. I don't think they're going to close the coffee shops. That has been such a part of culture in the Netherlands that, that n nobody can, can close them down. I think there's a, a big majority of people in favor of coffee shops. But any next step will be difficult. So, and the idea of the experiment also got hold in Germany because they ran into problems with uh, the European Commission because a full... Uh, chain from growing to retail on a commercial level is not allowed by EU law, but everything for personal use is allowed in the sense that countries can decide on that themselves. And that, that is the, the framework decision of 2004. And Luxembourg, when the, when the new government, the new uh, left, center-left government came into power, they wanted to uh, reg reg legally regulate the whole chain, but they got into trouble with the commission. So what Germany did now is to have home cultivation for personal use and collective home, home cultivation, you could say, in cannabis clubs, it's not real cannabis clubs, but because you cannot uh, use there, for instance. But you, yeah, you can buy your uh, cannabis there, 25 grams is allowed to, to, uh, for, for takeaway, to, to carry on you. So Luxembourg also got a new elections center-right government now, but they kept at least the home cultivation, they allow that. And of course Malta has home growing and cannabis clubs, and uh, yeah, that seems to be become maybe the new model in Europe, except for the Dutch, because the Dutch always have it some kind of <laughs> different position and because of, yeah, the, 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 of the coffee shop that has been there for, for uh, 50 years already. So yeah, that seems to be the, the, the new model. It may be not that bad because it, it closes the door to commercial, uh, the, the, the American type, the Canadian type commercial cannabis uh, companies in the corporate capture of the cannabis industry. But it, 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 it's also very limited and it, yeah, it remains to be seen if home growing and cannabis clubs can really supply the whole market and if that doesn't op still keep the door open for, 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 for a black market. We'll have to wait and see. Also, we have to wait and see how, yeah, how the German cannabis clubs are going to operate because you get the impression that a lot of commercial companies uh, are going to offer to cannabis clubs 
that we'll take care of everything. We'll take care of all the paperwork. We give, we, we'll take care of the seeds, the, the lambs, everything for a certain price. And then uh, you can run your club and uh, we uh, do all the, the technical stuff for you. Maybe also not a bad model uh, because that, that, yeah, it's kind of a hybrid model, you could say. And, and on the one hand, the leadership of the, uh, of the club is still in democratic hands the members of the club and yeah and they can employ a company to yeah to make to to help it run if they do it that way then there will be more cannabis clubs in that way and so that they might supply uh, more of the um, the legal market and then the checks are uh, yeah it's still unclear where they want to go but i guess it will be some kind of look alike to the German model with an experiment. And that seems to be a country that that is how far you can go within the European contracts in the, in the, in the European law. So no one seems to follow the Dutch model with the coffee shops. Why is that? Because, that, because the, the, the commission is uh, stopping that. But there's a strange situation because that's all based on the 2004 framework decision and then the coffee shops already existed. So that whole coffee shop system, the model was already there. And there is some, some kind of tacit understanding for, well, we leave that alone. I mean, that's, that, that was there. And we're not going to discuss that anymore. In your, your view, how do you compare these two models, like the cannabis club model or the coffee shop model in the Netherlands? Which one is better? Well, what worries me is, is, is um, a corporate capture of the cannabis market and that you get yeah, large com companies which are difficult to control in terms of uh, whether they comply with all, all measures to protect public health. Yeah? Looking at the tobacco industry or the alcohol industry, there's, there's a risk there. I would rather have a, a um, yeah, more controlled model, but it has to be in such a way that, yeah, that access is not complicated too much, that people have easy access to to cannabis without it being a commercial model. And the Dutch model is commercial. It, the coffee shops, well, it started uh, as activist thing, but basically all the coffee shops are commercial enterprises. And also the, uh, the, uh, the 10 growers now, these are commercial enterprises. So, but it, it's at least um, in such a way that you now uh, 10 companies who can start uh, what will happen uh, when the, the whole country, when, when, when they decide to, to, yeah, to end the experiment and then allow regulation for the whole country, that, yeah, that's unclear yet. You might think that uh, yeah, American and Canadian companies move in, although some Canadian companies already moved, moved in with, with, with several of the, the 10 growers. But yeah, the, the Canadian companies uh, have difficulty on their own domestic market already, so yeah, I'm going to have to wait and see. But I think it's, yeah, yeah, I mean, after all, cannabis remains a psychoactive substance with some risks to just have a free market there. I think it's not a good idea from a public health point of view. Do you think that some European uh, governments could do the same what Bol Bolivia did with coca in case of cannabis, like they resign from the conventions, rejoin without uh, accepting the cannabis-related parts. If they want to move to a more liberated market, they have to do that. And we have proposed that uh, you can have a, a, a model with, yeah, like the Bolivian route, you can also have inter se uh, modification of the of the conventions, and you have to do that because the e EU law is based, is very much intertwined with the conventions. Uh, basically, it, it is a bylaw of, of the conventions. You could almost say that you're legally not correct, but yeah, so if you want to uh, change things in, uh, uh, according to EU law, you have to do something with the conventions first. So, so you, or either you follow what the Bolivia route, as we call it, or an inter se agreement or a combination of that with a human rights that initiation of it and then um, and then they could go to a, yeah, a more uh, yeah, uh, liberal market oriented cannabis market certainly not at this this time when international law is already very fragile you see palestine and uh, 
Ukraine, uh, anyone wants to meddle with international law. So I don't see any country now taking that step, even not Canada or, or Uruguay. They have had a legal market for 10 years now in Uruguay, five years in Canada. They haven't taken any initiative in that direction. And Europe is not going to do that either. It, it's going to all depend on what is going to happen in the United States. If at the federal level, cannabis will be legally regulated, then I think things at the international level might start moving. So we depend again on what is happening in the United States, I guess. So what we see around the world is a kind of erosion of democracies and shrinking space for civil society. Do you think it will have an impact on drug policy reform? Yeah, well, the risk, of course, is that uh, all kinds of um, non-profit models with cannabis, uh, public health-oriented models, will be more difficult and that yeah, uh, big market players will play a more important role on, on how the future of, of legal uh, cannabis will be in Europe. If we look beyond Europe, for example, Thailand and the legalization was reversed there, how do you see the situation? Yeah, I think that was... Uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, but they did it all the wrong way around. So, yeah, they just liberated it without a regulation in place. And now you see uh, the blowback. So now it's going to be... But that was... It looked all, all very nice and suddenly you had all kinds of shops selling cannabis all over the place. Dutch... American entrepreneurs investing in it, so there was already and, and, and taking away, away uh, part of the market from from the local growers. It was such a mess, and now you, uh, if you, uh, that's a lesson to be learned. If you do it this way, uh, in a messy way, you get a blowback, and then now it's all uh, recriminalized again. So you really have to have a good plan of how you want to regulate it in place before you do. Yeah, you just get cannabis out of the out of the law.